Hey all, how's it going? This is MLS Reach and welcome to another weekly episode where we look at seven book covers, talk about why they're good, talk about how they can maybe be a little better, and then we let you vote for your favorite in the link down below. Speaking of down below, do me a favor, please click the like button and the subscribe button. Uh, honestly, if there's a button down there, if you could click it, I'd really appreciate it to help me out. One of those is a link to my author webpage. I'm your humble host, MLS Reach. I'm a self-published author. And if you would be so kind, I'd greatly appreciate it if you go to my Amazon page and look at my work and see if you're interested in any of those books. That would be a great help. So last week was the last week of September. And when we announced the winner for that book cover, that will allow you to vote for the September book cover of the month. But we take the four winners from the last four weeks, put them in one winner take all poll and name the MLS Reach 2021 book cover of the month. And that winner is Falling by TJ Newman. That's this cover right here. I really like what they did with the text. I really like what they, uh, how they created a pattern with the plane and the direction in which the plane is going. I like the colors that they, that they used to uh, gradiate them um, from the, the, the cooler colors, the blue green, uh, all the way up into the red. So it's a very, very well done cover. Uh, and and congratulations and best of luck in the book cover of the month competition. But now that September is over, we're ready to start choosing covers for October, and that means we're ready to start looking at the um, seven book covers for the first week of October. And the first one we're going to look at is called Persona Non Grata by A Summit. Uh, I like the cover. Of, I like the color of this cover. I think it's very clever. Uh, when I looked at this, I thought it was kind of like the inverse of the Jaws cover. So because it's hitting those little memory coils in my body, I, I like it a little bit better. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with the uh, these weird shapes underneath. Uh, I know that this is a story about addiction and relapse and things of that sort. So maybe there's some symbology there that I'm just not personally aware of. Uh, but I love the use of the silhouettes. I love the way that they're blending the colors and the data. Uh, honestly, I think the text is is not very good, though. I think that uh, it looks pretty slapped on from the author text to the subtitle text to the, the, the main title up above. Uh, I think a little bit of more love and planning could have gone into that, but it doesn't take away from the cleverness of the overall design. The next cover we're going to talk about is We Who Pave the Milky Way. And this cover is all about color. I think the color of this cover is just neat. Uh, you got the cityscape silhouettes going on. You have the interesting uh, 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 spread from the red to the gray. We have the interesting pattern in the moon. I'm looking at this shape here and I just can't for the life of me decide if that's some sort of woman wearing a sun hat or if it's just kind of a trick of the eye. Uh, but whatever they're doing, I really like the color. I really like the choice of the text. Uh, so this book by Hal Arnold, uh, just simply but cleverly designed. And, it, you know, it, it's neat. So those are two text-based designs in a row. In a row. Uh, now we're going to start talking a little bit about uh, alternate cover designs. Uh, the next book cover we're going to talk about is The Virtue of War or The War of Virtue, that's what it is, The War of Virtue. Uh, and that's by Elo Addison and Justin Sloan. Uh, this cover is all about light. So in order to capture this as a portrait, a photographer would need to wrap a device around their lighting. Uh, they call that a snoot. And so when you take a snoot, it's just, uh, I've used like an old pizza box. It's not, it's not as fancy as, uh, it, it, as it has to sound, although you can spend money on, on a snoot if you want. All you're trying to do, though, is take the light that you're working with and, and cone it so that it creates this perfect little circle of light right there in the eyes. And that's just nice lighting, nice use of uh, backlight. Uh, uh, it appears to be uh, uh, representing moonlight. So you have the snoot coming through on the eyes and you have the, the, the backlight separating the figure from the background. Uh, you have the title text and a nice spot. I'm a little interested in the symbol uh, and in the, uh, 
the lower half. It feels a little disjointed to me, but anytime you execute lighting this well, and, and you have your elements arranged in, in, in a pretty basic manner, it's going to go a long way for you. And, and this cover is no different. The next cover we're going to talk about uh, has a very anime theme to me. Uh, uh, it's called Dormant Power uh, by uh, Shai uh, Dao, I believe is how you pronounce it. I always try my best with the pronunciation, but sometimes... Uh, you know, I got to read the words that are on the page. Uh, you know, I look at this and I think about Attack on Titan. And so uh, I, I probably have a higher affinity for this cover than it may merit. I'll tell you right now, the text in any degree is just really, really hard to read. Um, every time I've looked at this cover and tried to read the author's name, it's hard enough to pronounce it because it's an unusual name, or at least it is uh, based on where I'm from. Uh, then add to that this weird embossing that they've done with the text, that's what I would do to replace it. I'm not actually upset at the, the, the highlights in the face and in the background there. It's a stylistic choice. Some people might not appreciate it that much, but I don't mind it that much. Uh, I like the splash of red in the color, but my biggest issue is the legibility of the text. I wish that the designer had put a little more uh, thought into that and making sure that the, the text didn't didn't conflict so much with the uh, the actual art and the rendering. And when you have a, a high key spot color theme going on, uh, bells and whistles on your text are gonna kind of hurt. That's next cover we're gonna look at is you give magic a bad name and I can't say that and not hear Bon Jovi. I don't know about you guys, but that's just how I work. Uh, so this book is by Ty Burson. And again, we're looking at well-executed light. So you have this magic firepower, whatever it is, this flame of ability, whatever's going on, you have it going all the way around the subject. What that allows you to do is backlight the subject in a way that's interesting and sep separates it from the background and front light the subject, which allows you then to fill in the shadow that would normally be created by putting a light behind an object. Uh, so that's clever. I do think that there should be some element of rim light around this subject. I, I, there, there's a lot of light going on in the back and that would normally cause uh, um, the light to flare behind the subject. Uh, and that would actually elevate this cover even higher. But I really think that, that, that the title is clever and the way they designed the title as a part of the text is also clever. The figure is well rendered and well and 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 well um, articulated. So all of those things add together to a pretty impressive cover, even though it's essentially just a figure on a on a on a on a on a background. All right. And the next cover we have is Broken Lands by Derek Schubert. Uh, this post-apocalyptic kind of cover is uh, creating some, some landscapes. I'm not the biggest fans of covers like this. I'm really not. I, I, I struggle with, you know, you're gonna put a person in the photo, so I wanna see the person. But then you're gonna show me the back of that person's head and put them on this landscape, which would be interesting if there weren't these two people in my face. Uh, but the text is really well done. The layering is really well done. I, I, I do wish it was more about the landscape and less about the figures. And if it was more about the figures, I wish that they were facing me so that we have eyes that we can connect with. But the detail in the background, the how well the text is done, um, those things I felt deserved some sort of recognition. The last book cover we're going to look at is Clawing for Vengeance by Kevin McLaughlin and, of course, Michael Anderle, who apparently publishes a book every two days. Um, this isn't the greatest cover I've seen from them, but it is well designed. It's particularly well composed. Sure, you got some light things going on and the light things are kind of cool, but the light's not really behaving the way that makes a whole lot of sense to me. What I like about this cover, though, is you have a figure here, a figure here. You have the dragon in the background of the photo, even though it's uh, um, the sky. It's, it's 
become the background because of the low point of view, you do have an interesting point of view. So the composition is actually what I think is worthy of note in this particular book, because everything has its own space and they're all put together in an interesting way. So in the other book, the text was hard to read because they were doing some weird light embossing technique. Uh, maybe some got a little carried away with Photoshop layers. Um, and that can, that can be a little bit frustrating. But at the end of the day, I can read this, Clawing for Vengeance. I don't have to fight for it. I can read the names on the author title. And it's not a challenge for me to, for me to go through and see. So even though the light is weird, I, I find myself going like, well, hold on. Why is he not? Why, is, why, is, why doesn't he have any element? The light is blue. So why is the light on her face white? Those are little, little teeny tiny details that, that honestly can, can drive a photographer a little bit nuts. And these are, are challenges I wish the designer had thought about, but it's still pretty cool to look at. It's still pretty, pretty interesting to see. And those are seven covers. And what I'd like you to do is head on down to the link below. You got two things to vote for this week. You got the book cover of the month for September and each one, each winner for every month gets put in a book cover of the year poll all on its own. So it's real important. Please go down there, make sure you support them. And then remember to click on the other link and vote for your favorite for this week so that next month can have an awesome competition. Thank you always for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, and as always, God be with you.